Rattaloni's Hardware and Garden Stores brings you Garage Logic Podcast number 1,221, January 8th, 2024. 54 degrees on this day, 2003. And uh, three below on this day. No, I'm sorry. 30 below on this day in 1875. Hail the flashlight, King. Hail you! And now, from the mayor's office above the boathouse on the east shore of Spoon Lake, it's Garage Logic with Chris Reavers manning Technology Corner, Kenny Olson from the Krabby Coffee Shop, John Hyde in the newsroom, and of course, the rookie. Here is your flashlight king, fireworks commissioner, and the keeper of common sense, your mayor, Joe Sushir. The last 25 years of the 19th century were very strange. It, it now occurs to me as a fellow who looks at the records every day. It was either 100 degrees, I mean, it was either 100 below in January or 60 above. <clears throat> they, they, are always, they were freezing to death mostly, but then they would have the winter of 1877, 78. Okay. Was the record non-winter of all time? So are you now no longer a denier? Is that what you're saying? No. What does that have to do with denying anything? Well, you're you're the ultimate denier. No, the, I'm just saying it was weird. Okay. Nature's weird. It's it. weird today. Swings down. Swings are we? Down. What is the garage logic thought on using a blower, a leaf blower, to remove snow? Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is that yeah. acceptable? <laughs> yes, it is, especially if it runs on gasoline. What if it's electric? That is also acceptable. Anything that keeps the shovel out of your hand, yeah, do it. Plus, do it's it. kind do of it. fun, isn't it? Do it. I've never yeah. done it, but it the seems The electric fun. one I have is really, really powerful. It's really Mine a is, good one. Yeah, I have both, and my electric one is way better than my gas one. <laughs> Although, what if you have the plug-in version... And he can only get down, you know, three quarters of the driveway. No, this is battery operated. Battery. And oh, oh, mine is plug it into the wall kind. See, that's what I was Me thinking. Too. Well, I'm not doing that. <clears throat> I just bought my kid um, a big five hundred dollar um, rechargeable blower. That's absolutely amazing. Yeah, mine's Got it from rechargeable. Tri-State. Got it from Tri-State Bobcat. <laughs> I, I'm trying to think of the name of mine. It's a famous name. Echo. Toro. Well, I don't know if it's Echo or, or Gary. What. But uh, but we've saw, in other words, my question has been answered. It is entirely acceptable to use a yes. blower. Yeah. Tried to use it on the roof once back in the day. How'd that work out? That did not work. Got it. No, it didn't. It was a wet, heavy snow. A blower is worthless on wet, heavy snow. I wish there was video so Bingo. we could picture your neighbors. What the hell is he doing up there? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Scott Holter from Seattle. He used to be uh, very active in the music department of Garage Logic. Has moved to the West Coast over the years. And he was listening to the Friday show and he has a quick correction on the Seattle is Dying documentary. Remember, we were saying, uh, we were talking about where to put the homeless. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I said they did, they turned a prison in Seattle into a, you know, dormitories. And Scott Holter's correcting that. I'm sure you guys have forgotten this with time, but that putting the homeless in the old prison idea, McNeil Island, about 50 miles from Seattle, was just an idea the creators of the documentary had. It never happened, and it never will. Seattle has more homeless on the streets than ever. I could walk you in a square mile from my house and show you 300 a a day, any day, any week. You're right. These encampments are dumps. And the only people who don't have to live next to them fight to leave them as they are. Happy New Year to you and the fellas, Scott. So I I mistook the documentary. That was the idea the creators of the documentary had. Let's turn this into a homeless Uh, But what was was their ultimate uh, plan? What did they execute? Because I remember the people that had said, if I didn't have this treatment, I would be dead. May I tell you something? Yes, sir. I don't remember. Because, uh, as Scott said, uh, we've forgotten what that documentary said. Hmm. 
but I still I'm still on the fruit warehouse bandwagon. But that got sold, didn't it? Yes, that was sold. What's that going to? Is that now a furniture warehouse or something? I don't or I'm whatever, not sure what it is. What they did to it, but that was one of Walls' great scams. Let's buy a fruit warehouse. And, and stack up the dead. So if we make money off of that transaction, where does that money go? Uh, not back to us. Not, oh. not to us. The, uh, you know, good leadership. We we po- the political class has forgotten this or have been allowed to get away with it. Good leadership is also not spending money, right? Leadership. They think leadership is dreaming up all the ways they can spend money. To say, look, look what I've done. Yeah. What about not spending money and say, look, look what I've done? I would stand up and applaud. Yeah. A case too. in point uh, is a proposed streetcar line for West 7th Street in St. Paul. What would you say? It's been discussed for 25 years. And for 25 years, it hasn't happened. The main reason I believe that it hasn't happened is that there's been absolutely no demand for it. Agreed. You 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 find nobody standing on Seventh Street saying, "Well, I mentioned this yesterday. I wrote about it." You find nobody on Seventh Street saying, "Well, I guess I'm not going to Los Angeles today. I can't, can't get, get to, to the, the airport." airport. No. Nope. That's never happened in recorded history. <laughs> so in 2016, the price tag to turn 7th Street into what they preciously call the River, Riverview Corridor, the river not being seen anywhere along West 7th Street. Just Fort Snelling yeah. over the river. Well, that's and you then you to get you there. Can, you can't see it anyway. Right. So... Right. So, How are they going to handle that? In 2016, the price was estimated to be $1.2 billion. Oof-da. What would it be today? Oh, heavens. And Rafael Ortega, Ramsey County Commissioner, he seems to be the point fellow on this. He's the head of the uh, Ramsey County Regional Rail Authority, right? Okay. Yep. So, Rafael... It would display great leadership to finally put this whole question to bed and say, you know what? We've looked at this for a long time. There's really no urgent demand for this. There's no need to tear up West 7th Street. There's no need to disrupt the businesses that are trying to keep themselves alive along this stretch. We don't need this. We don't need to spend this money. I would I would give the guy, I would send him flowers. When do we ever get that kind of leadership? Where was where was Walls to say, you know, we got an eighteen billion dollars surplus here. We'd we'd really be foolish to spend all that because all that means is that we're fiscally responsible for reproducing it every two years. Right. And he said that's not that's not plausible. There are going to be times when we could not do that. Does that ever occur to him to say that? Apparently, no. it has not. No, it doesn't at all. Mayors. City council people, believe me, you, you'd be noticed for your leadership in not spending money. That is also under your purview. But you also probably wouldn't be elected here uh, yeah, I think because it, you, you're creating these programs for what? We've, we've been over this a million well, times. Well, who in the hell would elect anybody based on whether they successfully got a streetcar Route on Seventh Street. Well, it would be Not framed. Me. It would be framed as look at what they're doing for public transportation. Well, think of what they're doing though. The streetcar tracks were torn up in the Twin Cities in about 1953, 54, and you now have people trying to sell us on the idea that reestablishing streetcars is a progressive, futuristic mode of travel. It's not in this day and age. They tore them out of here in 1954. Right. There was corruption, hijinks. You know, little con- little uh, collusion between General Motors and some big hitters in Minneapolis. And Minneapolis had big hitters. Be that as it may. Pull it. Be the- yes, be that as it may. The streetcars left. They weren't progressive enough. Right. But now, let's bring them back as a sign of our progressive thinking. 
somebody, some leader could really make a stand by saying, I'm not going to spend the public's money this way. That's not that why be, you elected me. Right. Democrat or Republican. Oh, I would cheer on either one. Yes. Well, in, there, the, in the Twin Cities and Minnesota, you'd have to root for it being a Democrat. There, you don't have any options. Right. Is there actually a chance of this happening? No. no. God, no. No. Okay. Um, from your newspaper, because I know we'll get a lot of emails from this, uh, the Port Authority's Board of Commission approved the sale to Soldier Trucking. That's who bought it, a family-owned trucking company. Bought what? You... Your more big produce your, plant. Yeah. Your the Walls plant. The oh, big sold one. it to who? A family-owned trucking company by the name of Soldier Trucking. All right. Based out of Menominee, Wisconsin. Has like Walls? Saying Menominee. Has Menominee. he ever bragged about not spending money on maybe some an issue that might have been uh, from the Republicans or the right? That's the only time I could think of. The only time I think he drew the line was he didn't put the kibosh on a Mayo Clinic's expansion. Uh, remember, yeah, the Mayo Clinic he's... wanted to spend billions and are going to spend billions in Rochester. I would imagine the state has a hand in that, and he he uh, he would not put a kibosh on that. I don't think any governor would, would they? He no. was one of many governors, though, that um, didn't think we should spend the money on border security back in the day. I remember him saying that. Well, I think we should. See, that's the other part of the leadership. Figure out where the money needs to be spent right. on behalf of the people you supposedly represent. Right. Amen. Here, here. Way too commonsensical. Uh, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Okay. Did you see what the National Football League is doing to the Swifties? <laughs> Kansas City is, uh, who are they playing? They're playing the Dolphins. Kansas City hosts Miami in the playoffs this coming Saturday night, but the game is only on Peacock. Okay. So if you don't have Peacock, I guess you got to either buy it or go somewhere where somebody has it. Or or call John in the middle of the night and ask him like I had to do a week ago. <laughs> and the suspicion, the suspicion, completely unfounded, but a delightful <clears throat> suspicion, is that the league is really, of course, what, what what's in it for the league to shift that game to Peacock? They don't have any interest in Peacock, do they? Oh, Pe Peacock paid one hundred and eleven million dollars yeah. to carry this game. Wow! It, Just to carry this any, game, any John? playoff game, whatever. A, yes, this playoff. playoff game. That answers my question. And the NFL owes Peacock a big favor, so they shifted Kansas City Miami to Peacock Saturday night. Yeah, but they've done this before. They did it with Amazon. They've done it with. Uh, yeah. Yeah, this is in. But not for playoffs, I don't think, Chris, did they? You're right. You're probably right. Regular but, season. Yeah. Speaking yeah. of the Swifties. Mm -hmm. What do you got? Did you see her Are outfit? you a Swiftie? Yesterday, the, the uh, CP went to the store early, knowing, er, and, and while there, knowing that the Sunday papers wouldn't get to our house before noon, picked up the Sunday papers. What a guy. You got a good catch. Yeah, and threw in the Sunday New York Times, wow. which, I, which I normally wouldn't buy. Uh, but I'll certainly read it if it's presented to me. And I went through it, and there was the damnedest piece. There was a piece by Ann Marks, who's an opinion writer, presumably in the editorial department of the New York Times, who herself is identifies as queer or has some ongoing gender confusion, but she's a perfect fit for the New okay. York Times. And she wrote a long piece strongly intimating that Taylor Swift is gay and that her lyrics present this and the way she acts and this and that and the other thing. And it struck me as a, a terribly uh, selfish and unfair thing of this Marx to do. Well, she now, do I don't care who's gay and who isn't, but it's, it, you know, it's smacked to me of recruitment. Well, I was saying, is she accusatory or is she praising? Uh, it, it, it had the, it had the, uh, the taste of uh, she really wants to be one of us, but hasn't hmm. hasn't identified yet. That kind of thing. And I thought, well, you you uh, word I can't say that you that's not your business, right? Now, let, I don't care what she is, but it 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 smelled it it smelled rotten. Something something smelled is rotten, rotten in Denmark. Denmark yes. <laughs> what a bad! I mean, Denmark gets a bad rap on that one, doesn't it? It was. Have you was, ever been there? Was, was it a bad. body that smelled wrong? 
I think it was a body. I think right? it was. Yeah. He doth protest Hamlet, too much. Uh, yeah. Yeah, thing there. Stabby. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> There's so much for a deep literature comment here. Yeah, very good. Anyway, I don't know you. if anybody read that piece. Uh, 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 Taylor, I guess, given her status, is she fair game for that kind of stuff? Uh, one way or another, I guess that's what's going to happen. But the New York Times, when you read a Sunday New York Times, you realize they got a lot of despicable people writing for them. <laughs> did she? Um, Spike did, Yeah. Did she do anything to convince the reader why they should care? Uh, I'm, I'm having a hard time trying to figure out why I would care either way. Right. That's what I'm saying. Well, how's that going to change my life? It's, why Why would I even think it's interesting? Well, in all honesty, I did not complete the piece. <laughs> Pretty tough. I, I, yeah. I wore out. Uh, yeah, but it's a tough one. It's making the headlines, though, today on your Internet that Taylor's camp uh, has their back up because of these so thinly veiled accusations. Basically, what the Times did is they used uh, Taylor to sell newspapers basically uh sure yep yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. click that's what we did yeah bait and, and this and that and the other thing yeah, and, yeah. but uh, you know if 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 the queer nation is is going to play that game what song could they not take and and imagine to themselves that the lyrics are referring to their world you could you could do that with almost any song why doesn't taylor just shake it off is that a song of oh, hers? God Almighty! Yeah. I knew, I knew, I could see it working over there. Yeah, I could see. How's he going to do simple. it? Shake it well, off. Well, you know, she doesn't need me to defend her, and I'm sure she'll live. I just yeah, she'll of, be okay. I think she'll be okay. I'm sure, she'll but be. it just it just struck me as such a bold, a bold attempt by this Anne Marks, whoever she is, to how of, of recruitment. Matthew, maybe you know how is uh, Taylor received with the gay folks do they love her they love her oh why do you well, think why would you assume that matt knew that <laughs> just because <laughs> most pop culture just the, i guess <laughs> type of information comes to us from well, from matthew it, to be honest i was i didn't want to hurt you or I, or I guess i don't want to hurt the glers perception of you but i will say this i have been eagerly awaiting now for about three four weeks we learned that you watched the entire taylor um movie and uh, i've really i've been waiting for a review on garage logic i would like to hear your review i think it's called the eras tour minor rookies no yours yours me yeah, you. You watched it. I watched you could admit hour. it. No, I watched an hour of it. Yeah, you watched the whole thing. We want to hear what, what you thought. <laughs> did you use any tissues, that box that you keep right there at your easy chair? Did, were you mopping up tears, blowing your nose? Um, no, and that? I'll be glad to give you my observations. I Please gave do. it an hour in between doing other things. I would give it 15-minute chunk. And, and crying she's still watching it. Yeah, I was chopping wood. Yeah, in in between was, crying jags. He, he gave it. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. We're eagerly awaiting. Go ahead. Am I going to be interrupted? No, well, sorry. maybe. Probably. Yeah. Depending on what you say. Probably. Yeah, probably. Give it a shot. Uh, here's my take on her. Uh, terribly middle-of-the-road voice. Not much of a voice uh, to stand out, really. Uh, songs that sounded to me to be pretty much the same. Uh, lyrically, they weren't uh, anything special. Uh, but her uh, her magic must be this incredible theatricality that she has. Hmm. She is an entertainer. She she can really identify with an audience. But in terms of a of a, 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 a rock and roll uh, Hall of Fame voice, that doesn't exist. And to me, Hall of Fame songs don't exist in the hour I watched. But if you're 12, I can't imagine that you could find anybody more fun and more easy to, to cheer on and get along with and, and be happy with. And uh, I'm glad the, the kids of the kids of the kids of the kids saw, saw her. I think they had a great time. And uh, I wouldn't walk across the street. I, I think though you need you're you're a bit mistaken because if you talk to women who are twenty to forty, yeah, yeah. they love they okay, love. Okay, so well, yep. well, why not? Yep. Why don't I just say women? 
Yeah, yeah because when you, be hit, when you say yeah. 12 year olds, yeah. it makes it sound like she's some teeny bopper. Uh, no, she's not a teeny parents. bopper, and she's got tremendous. My God, that tour must cost her a fortune. The stuff they she do. She makes and, a buck or two, though, yeah. off of the. And <laughs> apparently, she's very good to the help. Yes. Very good to the help. And very good with charities too. I, yeah. I think she donates a lot of money to charity. But don't 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 sell me on the fact that she's a marvelous singer and songwriter. I think she's a middle of the road. What about her dance song. steps, uh, Jody? You like her dance moves? <laughs> she, she's <laughs> probably she, uh, she's no uh, she's no Michael Jackson on the foots. What do you think no. about her outfits? Yeah, the outfit changes. Well, that, you, was the point of of the changes. that was the point of the era's tour. Apparently, there's a trap door in the stage. She plunges down, and then a, the, the, her pit crew changes her. her in about two seconds like an F1 car, <laughs> and up she pops again in the in the outfit of that era. Huh. Mm-hmm. So you'd like the choreography. It was fantastic. What She's about the makeup, uh, the lip gloss, etc., <laughs> the shadow? You, you good with that? Good my enough? Garage door guy, uh, my garage door guy is the entire family, <laughs> Kenny. It's the entire family. Okay, Precision Joe. garage okay. door of the Twin <laughs> Cities in western Wisconsin. They need they need new members for their team. They pay well, and people who work there stay there because they love the they love the atmosphere and the competency. They're looking for uh, warehouse technicians, not warehouse technicians. More it would be warehouse inventory positions. And, but they do everything from install new garage doors to working on the springs and the rollers and getting the lights to work and the and the uh, Wi-Fi openers in your car to pair with the car. Anything you want, they do it all. They do it all. They don't charge more for weekends. Got it. They work uh, the metro area in western Wisconsin. And uh, I want you to put their telephone number in your contacts. See, that's the up-to-date way to do it. Mm-hmm. I was contacts. going with telephone closet yes, for a while. You're dating that, yourself. That was 1890s. Mm-hmm. Put it in your contacts. Precision door, 612-263-6985. Or you can make an appointment with them online at precisiondoormn.com. There's a new way to level up your sports watching experience. Join over a million fans across 33 states who got in the game last year by making picks on Underdog. You can win up to 1,000 times your money just by choosing higher or lower on your favorite player's stats like touchdowns, passing, yards, and more. I find it easy and fun to use while rooting for my favorite players. Making picks on Underdog is straightforward. Signing up even easier. Just head over to Underdog's simple to use mobile app or underdogfantasy.com. Sign up with the promo code GarageLogic and Underdog will give you you a free pick to use on your first cash pick em entry, plus up to $1,000 in bonus cash when you deposit. That's Underdog Fantasy promo code GarageLogic to claim your new customer special of a free pick and your deposit offer. Must be 18 plus, 19 plus in Alabama and Nebraska, 19 plus in Colorado for some games, 21 plus in Massachusetts and Arizona, and present in a state where Underdog Fantasy operates. Terms apply. Void in Colorado. Concerned with your play? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.ncpgambling.com. Org in Arizona, 1-800-NEXT-STEP, 1-800-639-8783, or text NEXT STEP to 53342. In New York, call the 24-7 HOPE line at 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369. Here's a man who spends hours in hardware stores, sifting through the nuts and bolts of life. Joe Souchere. I have a seafoam fix for your ill-running vehicles. You can pour it in the gas tank. You can pour it in the carburetor, the injector. You can pour it right into the crankcase. Uh, you can also use it on your small engines. There's a seafoam trans tune for your transmission. Also works with your power steering. That'll fix a lot of issues. Uh, we got a lot of things we can. We got a lot of things we a can fix. Things, a lot of things to talk with about. the seafoam. But uh, Sean, our emailer from last week, he he wishes that. Seafoam would make something to fix vehicle computers. I agree with that. I also wish there was a seafoam fix for uh, low batteries. I went to fire up the plow truck over the weekend. Battery was dead. Had to charge that thing up. Once it turned over, it jumped to life and idled perfectly because I've been using seafoam in this uh, plow truck all along. The other thing I wanted to mention about seafoam is at one point, a couple oil changes actually in a row, I dumped seafoam right into the crank right before that oil change. I used to have very low oil pressure on this thing, and ever since I did the seafoam fix, 
this, the oil pressure has been absolutely perfect. This stuff is a miracle for whatever you're driving, gasoline, diesel, small engine, uh, tiny engine, single cylinder, uh, twin. It doesn't matter. Seafoam can help. And it comes in all sorts of different forms, the SUV, uh, big truck stuff, the high mileage stuff, the marine stuff. It doesn't matter. Seafoam works the same on all your vehicles. You can find it everywhere and anywhere readily available for you. Truly a wonderful product in a world of bad gas. Seafoam. Is is a bat tree a tree in which bats live? Bat, bat tree. It. It's, where bat they, bat tree. Tree. it's where you grow them. That's where bats are grown. I can't remember when I bought that bat tree. Did you see where the Minneapolis City Council is going to vote on a resolution to have Israel withdraw from Gaza? Well, that'll fix it. Awesome. Let's get out. Yeah, let's do it, Minneapolis. Start it out. Doing the work of the I'm people. I'm so proud of you. The electorate must be satisfied that they've elected people who will not represent them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's so perfect. That's right. very deep. They must be satisfied to have, to have elected council people who have no interest in their sidewalks or their streets or their lights Up or deep. their parks or their library. You know, they you just know. are interested in, in passing a resolution to tell Israel how to behave. Right. That might actually be good. I think that's how I would feel if I lived in Minneapolis. You don't want the city council getting involved in your business. Well, don't worry about it. They don't even know you, you exist. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's go all the way back to Aristotle. Uh, I'm trying to think of a point to go back to at the beginning of reasoning. Okay. What, what possible obligation... And I don't say this out of mean-spiritedness. I, I say this out of a desperate attempt to find a fact. What possible obligation does the California taxpayer have, and presumably it would also be done here, what obligation does the California taxpayer have to provide free sex changes for illegal immigrants? Serious question. I cannot come up with an obligation. Is that a thing? Yeah, Newsom is doing this. It's been revealed that sex change, uh, sex changes in hormone therapy will be included in the health care coverage offered to illegal immigrants in California. As of January 1, everyone, regardless of whether they enter the country via legal means, will qualify for Medi-Cal, the state's public health insurance program. This program has typically been reserved for low-income individuals, families with kids, seniors, and persons with disabilities, people in foster care, pregnant women, and low-income people with diseases such as tuberculosis, tuberculosis, cancer, or HIV AIDS. Prior to the new rules, illegal immigrants were only able to access emergency and pregnancy-related care. However, surgical and non-surgical procedures that bring primary and secondary gender characteristics into conformity with the individual's identified gender, including ancillary, ancillary services such as hair removal, are now covered as well. Thank God. Based on what? Whose idea was this? Newsom. Hair removal? <laughs> By hmm down yeah there way down there the decision to include illegal immigrants in medical was made in may of last year state senator maria elena durazo called it his called it a historic investment that speaks to california's commitment to health care as a human right okay okay uh, what's your name, Maria Elena Durazo? You are uh, you are not an American in the sense of your vision. You are a Marxist or a whatever you are. But uh, if you have a commitment to health care as a human right, then I would suspect this woman believes that everything that historically has been worked for should be interpreted instead as a human right. Hmm. So your house should be provided. That's a human right. Yeah, where do you end? Where do you draw the line? Your food should be provided. That's a human right. What about gas? 
Uh, yes, I got to get to. What no, about darts? Long darts? No, no, no. There wouldn't be cars because oh. the same crowd would would insist that we can move you about easier in public transit. Got it. So there'd be no cars or no gas money, but we'll provide your food, your housing, your clothing. Anything that traditionally has been worked for would be considered a human right in the eyes of a woman like this who gets elected. So now you're an illegal immigrant and you can just have anything done you want and you're going to pay for it. I think it's a ray of hope, though, Joe. I'm going back to the city council, Minneapolis City Council. The reaction to both the Star Tribune post and the there's a CARE 11 tweet about this as well. It's 99 percent people ripping the hell out of That's fine, but that makes council. no difference when it comes to elections. That's true. No, that's true. Uh, it, it's it's astonishing to me how many people uh, w- would appear to think like garage logicians when you see comments on news articles. Where are they at the polls? Right, but yet, right. The decision to uh, in California, we believe everyone deserves access to quality, affordable health care coverage, regardless of income, income or immigration status. Governor Gavin Newsom's office said in a statement to ABC News through this expansion, we're making sure families and communities across California are healthier, stronger and able to get the care they need when they need it. OK, that's 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 what they're that's who you elected in California. Uh, we're very close to that's who we've elected here. It would not surprise me in the least to have one of the urban DFL legislators propose the same thing here. It would not surprise me in the least. Hmm. But first, we'd have to attract more illegals, and it wouldn't surprise me if that if that plan isn't underway. We probably have DFLers looking around saying, "Why is Chicago? Why is Chicago getting all this attention for illegals? Why is New? York, we're not involved. We're not included. Why don't they come here?" What are you reading, William Penn? Search. Oh yeah, I got to come to that. Mm. Last year, twenty twenty three, seventy five thousand four hundred twenty three hundred people moved out of California. This number, 2022, seems shocking. 343,000, according to the Internet, moved out of California in 2022. And I, I, I don't know what to do with those numbers. They're essentially meaningless to me. Were those people then replaced by a like number of people? Yeah, good question. To continue paying the taxes. Right. You know, we all we've been we've had this discussion a dozen times. We all say, "Oh, I'm moving." Well, okay. When it comes right down to it, are you really? Uh, can you pick up and what if you want to? What if you had to abandon your house? Are you going to leave that equity behind? And then what well, are you? Well, you might do? not be moving out of state, but some people are choosing to live in a more desirable tax. No, but many people have left California, and, right? And that's impressive. But it doesn't mean much until you find out if they've been replaced by a similar number of suckers. Well, they have because all of the, a lot of people that have crossed the border illegally are going to be, ta- you know, voting with their. Is he, he's not paying attention. I was trying to bait John. I was listening. Okay. He's listening. I he was listening. listening. But that's, face but on. that's, you know, that's the argument some have made. Mm-hmm. Whether that's going to hold true or not, who knows? There, there are thirty-nine million residents though in California, which probably is part of the. Uh, the equation there uh, that's, that's over ten percent of the u.s population yeah wow so so you and they still can't number. they still can't create an affordable budget with 39 million people 10 percent of the u.s population lives in the oh, state of california holy crap 11 11.7 to be exact wow I, I just changed my search now i'm searching how many people moved to california in 2022 is this correct Four hundred seventy-five thousand wouldn't surprise me. So more people moved there than moved away. Mm-hmm. Okay, wow. And you know the likes of Barbara Streisand. Every election cycle, she's going to leave, but she's still there. Mm-hmm. So, but this kinda, time, if Trump's elected, she's leaving. This time, she means right. it. She's going to go to Quebec. Yep. I don't know where she's going, Barbara. People like Quebec. Where did I read it over the weekend? Was it the New York Times? A great piece on uh, 
the the citizens of Quebec still pining for the return of the National Hockey League because they don't feel represented by the Cana- the Canadians. I believe it's Quebec. Quebec because Quebec, Quebec is uh, keeps itself as French as possible and they they regard uh, the Montreal as too cosmopolitan mm. and embracing <laughs> and embracing of the English language. Right? That's how we are here about yeah. Fargo. That's right. In my yeah. area. Yeah, those are snobs up in Fargo. <laughs> snobs in Fargo. <laughs> I, I just can't go there anymore, yes. those elitists. Hippies. That, uh, that was in the Times, Joe. You yeah. are correct. Yeah. I just found it. Yeah. John, uh, 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 what's your name? Reavers? Yeah. Uh, why don't we take a break and come back with Johnny Heist? <laughs> Sounds like a plan, Joe. Yeah, but let's clean up a little bit before we uh, do the break here. I'm talking about your carpets in your home, the one that uh, the cousins came and trampled all over. Somebody spilled some wine here. Maybe there's some... Kirk's family? Stains. I think so. The cousins came over? That's why they were there, because huh. we wanted to party with I them. I saw his nephew. Yes, sir. They're, uh, there they are. Didn't wear a shirt. Get rid of all those unsightly stains with zero res. And I've got a great offer for you, but you need to let them know you heard it on Garage Logic from the Rookie. It's the Rookie Special. It is right now, uh, this is a pretty darn good deal, $119. Get three rooms, zero reservoir, starting at just 119 bucks, And don't forget about $75 off your zero, uh, zero res clean air ducts. Try to say that three times fast. Call zero res right now and get on their schedule. 952-Z-E-R-O-R-E-Z. Go online to ZeroResMinnesota.com and tell them you want the rookie special. Say it. Spell it forward or backward. It's spelled the same. Z-E-R-O-R-E-Z. I trust them in my home. They'll do a great job in yours, and they back it up with the Zero Res Gotta Love It Guarantee. 4.9 rating on Google. Google 17,000 reviews. Go check them out. And that will prove what I'm telling you right now. It's a great deal. 952-Z-E-R-O-R-E-Z. Tell them that the Rook sent you. It's the end of the world as we know it, and he feels fine. Joe Souchere. Who's this? Jeff Dayton. Wonderful. Call me the other day. Well, I came to say happy new year. year. So I called him back. Nice. Yeah. Mini van and a sleeping bag, and I never looked back, and I never regretted it once. I don't want to interrupt this. Yeah, I go ahead. Winter whiteout warning coming. Actually, it's a big, big sale alert at Maple Grove Lock and Safe. We can save up to $700 on select White Liberty safes. Guard those treasures with the best in American-made security. The Maple Grove Lock and Safe winter whiteout sale features exclusive savings on premium Liberty safes. Act fast. Act now. Act today. Secure your peace of mind this season with the best fire protection from safes made right here in the United States of America with fully transferable lifetime warranties. And don't forget, personal delivery, installation, that's all available from Rich, our guy at Maple Grove Lock and Safe. Three ways to contact Rich with your questions. You can pick up the Ma Bell, 763-494-9075. You can stop into the Maple Grove Showroom, 6901 East Fish Lake Road. He's open Monday through Friday there, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Or the usual, the World Wide Web, maplegrovelockandsafe.com. Here's John Height. Thank you, Joe. This news brought to you by North American Banking Company. A quick winter weather note if you have any travel plans the next couple of days. Uh, it looks like a storm could dump up to 10 inches across southwestern Minnesota today and tomorrow. Uh, here in the Twin Cities, uh, not that much. We'll maybe get a couple inches of snow total before everything dies down on Tuesday. Uh, today, winter storm warnings cover 10 counties in southwestern Minnesota, including the cities of Worthington, Marshall, Slayton, Granite Falls, and Montevideo. That'll remain in effect until tomorrow. National Weather Service says travel could be difficult. Hazardous conditions could impact the morning and evening commutes. Uh, as Joe talked uh, about earlier, the Minneapolis City Council meeting this morning, they held their organizational meeting a week after members were sworn in and they picked a new president and vice president. Uh, the new president, Elliot Payne, the new vice president, Aisha Chugati. Council members, Andrew Jenkins... <sighs> 
and Linnea Paul Masano held the positions last year. They remain on the council. Payne and Chigani were nominated by the two newcomers to the council, Katie Cashman and Oren Chowdhury. Last year, the council and mayor's office struggled to unify on some key topics as the year went on. That'll again be something uh, to look for throughout the 2024 session when public safety and rideshare ordinances are again expected to be key issues. And uh, we haven't found out, they haven't gotten to it yet as of the uh, uh, last hour or so. The uh, Free Palestine Coalition has the city council voting on a resolution for a ceasefire in Gaza after a weekend of demonstrations in that That'll city. That'll do it. We'll the Free you know. Palestine Coalition. Now, Don't now you, s- you get so old of that, that'll bring him to his knees. <laughs> right. wow. Aren't they just doing this so they can keep up with all the other uh, cities across the United States that have done the same? Yeah. This yeah. has nothing to do with anything else. The closer you get to the country, well, well, let's recreate the phrase. The closer you get to the country's tallest buildings, the more likely you are to have voted for people that have absolutely nothing to do with you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I thought you were going to say people that hate Jews. Right. Or that <laughs> too. <laughs> um you seem disappointed about the choice of president and vice president, Joe. Who who are you plugging for? Who do you want to see? Who, there was no one to root for. I'll oh, take Wansley. I'll, I'll take uh, Andrea Jenkins as uh, emerging as a uh, middle of the rotor. <laughs> I would have thought I heard you say that. <laughs> Uh, Or in St. Paul, residents and officials there are pointing to cooperation (sighs) as the reason that crime (laughs) crime is down in that city. St. Paul police data showing homicides dropped from... 34 in 2022 to 33 in 2023. Aggravated assaults went down by over 200. Uh, Robberies dipped from 415 to 383. Carjackings from 53 to 42. And the number of people injured by non-fatal gunshots went down from 193 to 122. The Lost Fox Restaurant and Bar across the street from the Union Depot in St. Paul's Lower Town experienced five burglaries and two attempted break-ins during the earlier part of 2023. But owner Annie Rose told Five Eyewitness News, things have changed considerably over the past several months. She said when crime hit that peak, when the people who were living down here were fed up to the point where we started as a community to try and change the wave, things changed. She credited a collaborative effort between the St. Paul Police, Metro Transit Police, and the Office of Mayor Carter, businesses and residents for helping to change the trend in violent crimes. Yeah, I, I just can't help myself. I, I wonder if, if the crime is really down or if we redefined it. Yeah, I think in murder, it might only count as a murder if it's point blank. But if you shoot a guy like 50 yards away, I think that's not, called stray bullet. Okay. okay. I think we I got think it. we got some changes got here. It. And <laughs> with the crime statistics, I think we did discuss this at length a number of months, if not years ago. But if so much crime is either going unreported or unresponded to because of a lack of police enforcement, doesn't that then count towards the, st- the statistics going sure. down? Sure. Okay. I, thought I, I was- talked to a guy Saturday night okay. who will not come into St. Paul because he's afraid. I said, I got news for you, pal. It ain't that bad. No, it's you not. Know, take your shot. You'll be all right. You You'll got a 50-50 okay. shot. Yeah. Where do people exercise? I couldn't tell if the guy was being serious or not. <laughs> I said, well, you know, you can run up and down the streets. You know, Boom. You were all right. You ever try running for your life, pal? Yeah. Give it a shot. Yeah. Great yeah. exercise. It's great. You get your steps in. <laughs> Gets the old heart racing. <laughs> Letter carriers for the United States Postal Service say violent crimes, mostly assaults and robberies against them, have been going through the roof in recent years. Union leadership for the National Association of Letter Carriers, or NELC, at a rally on the steps of the Minneapolis Post Office on Sunday, said U.S. Postal Inspection Service data shows there have been 2,000 attacks against letter carriers since uh, 2020. That's across the country. That's a major escalation from years past, according to the union, and it was enough to spark an Enough is Enough rally across the country, including in the Twin Cities, where there have been three attacks in the last month and a half, according to NALC Branch 9 Executive Vice President Joseph Teeman. There have been two assaults on letter carriers in St. Paul since 2021 and 2021 and in 2022. Violence against postal workers is a federal crime. And in mid-2023, U.S. Postal Service launched Project Safe Delivery. That initiative included giving out rewards for any information about crimes against postal workers and stepping up targeted law enforcement efforts by that agency in October said it resulted in more than 600 
arrests. The only assault I'm aware of in St. Paul is the uh, the postal carrier who has uh, Lexington near 7th Street uh, has been routinely attacked by turkeys. <laughs> hmm. Or what, a, a picnicking serious. up That's in the woods? Serious, serious. Yeah. Well, Carl turkeys. Wetzel just said he chased a turkey away They're from Cassettas. Uh, Pat Mancini told me a turkey monitors traffic at 7th and Smith every day at 4 p.m. Stands in the middle of the intersection. Sent me a picture of it. i got to go see it for myself. <laughs> yeah, take yeah. a boat or when you're uh, there just to fight them off. Take a uh, this is a boat or an oar, you oh, know? Oh, a roar. Uh, lo- oh. An oar. Yeah. An what oar time is it there paddle. at 4 o'clock? <laughs> We're going there tonight. John, a uh, question for you, John. There was an acronym in there somewhere. What, what, what are they calling themselves? NELC. Uh, it's NELC. It's the National Association of Letter Carriers. NELC. It's we, the we, we've taken these acro- acronyms too far. Uh, I, somebody needs to put their foot down and say, N- we're full up on acronyms. No more. You don't get to you don't get to turn whatever your yeah, organization is into an acronym. Postal no. workers haven't had one, and they they kind of deserve no, one. No, they they have years. the biggest one of all. Yeah. USPS. USPS. Yeah. You've got the big one. That's yeah. all you're getting. That's all you get. Thank you. Uh, from the Star Tribune, <laughs> noted. I'm, I'm not going to argue with Kenny. <laughs> there, the the world of acronyms is out of control. I'm reading yes. a book now. That is, it's about the CIA, FBI, all these other. Those are acronyms. It is so loaded with acronyms that I have to keep going back and finding out what the hell these acronyms stand for. Just write it out. You know, the guys, the guys who broadcast uh, the uh, Vikings game on the radio are guilty of that. I've heard an acronym yesterday. FRP? Is that? What's Same to you. RPO. Run well, that's Ron Pass option. I know that one. No, mm-hmm. it was. It was an F and a P and an R in it, I thought. Maybe they, no, you, they'd no. heard you were listening, and it was they, F-U sushery. No, right. oh, hey. I don't know what it was. Yeah. Well, I think we share all of that. We have too many acronyms. And just as a reminder, GLers, why don't you sign up for the Garage Logic Town Council? No, no, no. GLers get it. I don't get it. That's an acronym. GLers. Oh. That's an acronym. GLers. GL. So it would be an acronym for <laughs> Garage Logic. GLTC. What now, Chris? Now it's bugging me. What were you thinking of? F. I don't know, okay. Uh, okay. but they didn't yeah. bother to explain it. I also, that was a good... also meant to email the kid who wrote this. I assume he's a kid, but I, I forgot. Okay. There's a young sports, again, I'm assuming young, a sports writer at the Star Tribune. Okay. Did a piece, I think it was either Friday or Saturday, <laughs> on Ricky Rubio retiring. Oh. Yeah. All right? Mm-hmm. It missed a crucial fact when you're doing a story about somebody retiring. What was that fact? How old was he? Thank you. I was going to email him, but I forgot. I lost his email. When you're doing a story about somebody who retires, give me the age. Right away. Right off the bat. Right off the boom. Yeah. Yeah. He's 33. Well, fine. I I know how to look it up, but I shouldn't (laughs) have had to. Right. I'm, I'm surprised he's that young. And he's just well, he's, uh, he's said he's some, wrestling with some mental issues. Yeah, he's having some. Well, who is a big are. deal? Yeah. <laughs> she's like barely get out of bed every day. What the hell? What do you want a medal? Uh, I thought you were going to. I thought when you were bringing up a young sports writer, I thought you were going to talk about one that we used to work with in his precious piece over the weekend. I don't know about how is. the homeless are our neighbors as well. Oh, that guy! I don't read him. Yeah. Yeah. Is that Jim? No, 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 no. no What's no. it? What you say it? That's Myron. 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 Oh, yeah. well, right. Yeah. Homeless. There are neighbors too. Oh, that stuff is so. Dreadful. He's got a. He's staying true to his brand. Yeah. Uh, speaking of sports, since we're talking about sports, the Vikings season is over. They lost just. They finished seven and ten. I thought they had a playoff but, chance. You mean to no. tell me the season's over? Season's over, oh, but it's man. not over for our neighboring Green Bay Packers. No, it who moved isn't. on to the first round of the playoffs. It'll be over play. quickly, though. They play It'll Dallas. Play. You know what, though? They're in the playoffs. That's right. You know what else? Youngest team since they started keeping records to make the playoffs. Yeah. yeah. Are that? you already looking forward to next year as they get older? Tell I me am. something. Okay. Is there a chance that the Motor City Kitties could go all the way here no. and take no. the victory? There's a no. chance. No. Of course there's a chance. It's Detroit. I'm surprised they didn't screw up the game last uh, night. This ain't your, <laughs> your father's Detroit. From game <laughs> 100. There. This isn't the wing. Five. 24 or 5 in a row. <laughs> yep. For standing uh-huh. and, and cheering. cheering. 
at the and end of the third the quarter, quarter while we're, we're on, on defense. defense. Yep. That's what just happened. That's just happened. I love it. That's what just happened at Ford Field to this guy <laughs> the and to this guy. guy. This guy. Ejected <laughs> for standing up and freaking cheering on defense. Oh, God, that's wonderful. What the hell? <laughs> I love, and there ain't no flags. I love how he's at half throttle. Yeah. Then he eases yeah. up to yeah. three quarters, and then it's just foot to the floor. So I yeah. believe that was brilliant. The two guys in the video. We've talked about this at length previously. Detroit Don. Is Detroit a super Don fan. is the guy that's speaking, yeah. and yeah. Super Fan is the Silent Bob character, where he's just yeah. holding the camera and nodding like. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So he's yeah. the Penn and Teller. I mean, yes. he's, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 He just Teller. holds the camera and nods. God, I hope they've been let back in. I hope. They didn't well, miss that it. guy. Never <laughs> missed a second of any. I game. hope they didn't miss this season. That just happened. Do any of you guys nice. listen to Common? Listen to Danny? Sure. I don't. Once in a while, he's got to be happy about this, huh? I would guess. Why well, is he a Detroit so. guy? Oh my god! Oh, yeah. oh. Well, is he from there? Kitties, I believe maybe. he's from oh. there. Yeah. The uh, Kenny and uh, Rook weren't in on this, so I better let him know. <laughs> I was unaware when I showed up to see you guys what I put on to wear today. There you oh, go. He's wearing a green bay shirt. Yeah. Oh, it looks logo very on nice. The back. Very Big logo nice. on the back. You back and the Reverend stabbing. Tim Christopher. I'd put Tim's you, also a Packer fan, yes. I'd put you at the end of the line if you were at the airport. Go! 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 go. 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 All right, why don't we take a little break here and uh, see what Rook tells us before we get to our national and international news. I would certainly love to do that. And I'm going to tell you about Minnesota Masonic Charities, Freemasonry. It's the world's first and largest fraternal organization, a brotherhood of like-minded guys who generally care about each other and is based on the belief that everyone has a responsibility to help make the world a better place. What a great idea. And it's not any government money, anything like that. Through its culture of philanthropy, they make a profound difference for brothers, their families, their communities, and our future. Freemasons find satisfaction in being part of a centuries-old fraternity whose traditions, core values, are important for our society today and will endure for centuries to come. Over 7,000 Masons in Minnesota, 100 lodges throughout the state. They're business owners, doctors, lawyers, teachers, parents, grandparents, GLers guided by faith and principles that they all believe in working together to make a difference, and boy, do they ever. If you'd like to learn more about Minnesota Masonic Charities and the Freemasons, go to mnfreemasons.org that's mnfreemasons.org The earth is not your mother The Joe Suchere Show North American Banking Company daily brings you John Heights newscast and I want to remind you that they became my bank a little while ago they should become yours as well. They're fantastic. They get it. They realize that there's no shortage of banking options here in the Twin Cities. So if you're tired, just like I was, of being a number to your big national bank, then be sure to check out my friends at North American Banking Company. Six locations can serve you. Mine's in Roseville, but you can also see them at 50th in France, Hastings, Woodbury, Shoreview, and their new location in Maple Grove. They offer the same online and mobile banking options as the other banks, but with the unparalleled service of a community bank. They are also locally owned and operated. Here's why that's a big deal. That means loan decisions are made right here in the Twin Cities. They are not sent out of state, so this helps business owners solve problems quickly and expand their business with confidence. They do banking differently at North American Banking Company, so check them out online today, nabankco.com. That's nabankco.com to learn more. North American Banking Company member FDIC is... An equal housing lender, Joe. Thank you, John. Chris. In uh, news, kicking off national and international stuff, war news. An Israeli strike killing a commander of Hezbollah's elite Radwan force in South Lebanon today. Uh, that, according to security forces familiar with the area, Lebanon told Reuters in one of the most highly profiled attacks on, uh, attacks on its senior officers in three months of hostilities with Israel, more than 130 Hezbollah fighters were injured. In Ukraine, Russia has unleashed another wave of missile and drone strikes across a number of regions in Ukraine today with at least four civilians killed in the latest attack. Uh, meanwhile, the chief editor of one of Vladimir Putin's propaganda TV channels has been found dead from a suspected poisoning. 48-year-old Zoya Konovalova 
who ran a channel operating near the front lines of Vlad's war, was found alongside her ex-husband. The editor was found in her bedroom, and her 52-year-old former husband, Andrei Gubatiaka's corpse, was found close by. Last month, the 35-year-old deputy editor-in-chief of Putin's favorite newspaper was found dead in Moscow. Uh, no word on how these... Uh, deaths may have occurred. Were they so poisoned that maybe they fell out a window accidentally? So, some folks are saying it's uh, Putin's regime killing them. Others are saying Ukraine somehow is killing them. Mm-hmm. So I guess we'll never really know. Would those Wall attacks, Street, by the way, John, would those attacks have stopped had they got word from the Minneapolis City Council, do you think? No, they're after Israel. This is Ukraine and Russia. But it started with Israel. John's international news did. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Wall Street, they you think so? Yeah. Okay. Wall Street Journal reporting the Pentagon's number two official didn't learn that her boss was hospitalized January 1st until four days after she had assumed some of his duties, according to U.S. military officials. All of this deepening the mystery of why Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin was hospitalized and why he hid his medical situation from senior defense officials and even President Biden until days after he was admitted to the hospital. Deputy Secretary of Defense Kathy Hicks, who was on scheduled leave in Puerto Rico, had already assumed some of his duties that week, which happens from time to time, according to Pentagon officials. Hicks had secure communications at her location while on vacation, uh, while on vacation as is routine, but she wasn't informed of the gravity of Austin's hospitalization, which included time in the intensive care unit of Walter Reed National Mil- uh, Military Medical Center until Thursday. That was about the same time when Jake Sullivan, White House National Security Advisor, was informed and when Sullivan, in turn, told President Biden. I have questions Austin. about this, John. Yes, sir. First of all, it's it's very unusual, isn't it? Here's the yes. Secretary of Defense in the hospital twice. And no one bothers to tell Biden? Correct. Okay, or- that tells me that either Lloyd Austin is so... Uh, ignored and, and is considered of such little consequence that nobody pays any attention to him. Mm. That's one scenario. Yeah. All right. The second would, I don't know what the second one is. That's the only one I've come up with. I do. What? Why would you want to further confuse Biden? He, he, he doesn't even know where he's at right now. Yeah. He doesn't know who this guy is, what he does, what the office is. Don't confuse him. Well, you don't let him be. That's it, maybe. He's taking a nap. Don't bother him. It's it's a Lloyd Austin thing. Uh, Apparently, he didn't let anybody know, including his assistant. Oh, Kenny Olsen deal. Yeah, Yeah. and apparently, I did read something in the Wall Street Journal also said he's very secretive about himself and doesn't want press at all. None of your business, pal. Yeah, but still, I mean, if you're he's Secretary the, of Defense... He's, the, he's be, right up yeah. there as one of the guys. you got to let somebody know, don't you? Yeah. Nobody's <laughs> business. <laughs> uh, he did release a statement taking responsibility for the lack of disclosure. Uh, 70-year-old Austin is still in the hospital, but uh, he's recovering, and he did resume his duties this past Friday after all of this came to light. Federal Aviation Administration said Saturday it'll temporarily ground some Boeing 737 Wait a minute, Max Wait a minute John. Sorry. Yes. Uh-huh. Well, uh-huh. I mean, I hate to be cynical, but we go. what if the reason was, uh, you know, I'm caught in the handcuffs and I can't get out uh, of one of those deals? You know? <laughs> yeah, stuck in the handcuffs. Ball gag, the whole deal. Ball gag, the whole deal. Got a cage on down there. He has to get to the dock to get squared away. He doesn't want to tell anybody. Right. Got something caught in him, maybe. Something like that, you know, like a skateboard or something. Let's just keep this between us. Yeah. 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 You can still run a camera, though, ironically. FAA said Saturday it'll temporarily ground some Boeing 737 MAX 9 airplanes used by U.S. airlines after a panel appeared to have become detached from an Alaska Airlines flight in midair. The FAA said it'll also ground 737 MAX 9 planes that operate in U.S. territory. In total, that will affect about 171 of the airplanes out of 218 worldwide. Uh, No serious injuries reported in the incident, but you may have seen this online. Pretty amazing. An iPhone. Sure did, John. Apparently flew out of the hole in the plane, fell 16,000 feet, (laughs) was found by a fella in Beaverton, Oregon, and the phone... No worse for the wear. Really? How about that? It's fine. I dropped mine like two feet and the whole screen cracked. 
Yeah. Uh, I have a question um, yes, um, for our, our very own air, airport um, expert. Have you been debriefed on this? Uh, do you know about this? Is there anything you can add to this? Any inside info? Uh, it has not cleared yet, so I'm not at liberty to speak on this subject. I have a question about it. Go. <laughs> the door was... The door vanished. Right. But with no structural damage, it, was, it wasn't like a cartoon pow through the fuselage. The door simply was there and then no longer there. There may have been some cross-check and all-call issues there, Joe. But you're not at liberty yet. I can't, yeah, I can't speak what? with authority on this. Well, that's, a, to me, a manufacturing problem. He's, was it well, banging in the wind like a screen door? No, it was for just, a while? there was the door just and then popped off. Whoosh, there wasn't the door. Nothing's ripped which or shredded. Is or, which seriously is completely bizarre. It's a clean breakaway of the door. But doesn't this basically tell all of us, Rook, with no offense, of course, due oh. to you and your I mean, professional wrestlers have been trying to open those doors for 50 years and have failed. Right. Right? Well, this right. wasn't to the main <laughs> cabin area, right? This was underneath, well, we wasn't right it? No, it was right in the cabin. Was on the, uh, the I, kid, they got his shirt stuck Picture the emergency exit row, Kenny. Yeah. Oh, it was. Yeah, yeah. that's where yeah. this took yeah. place. Oh, well, it's a wonder nobody got sucked out. A kid got right. his shirt sucked right off him, but his seatbelt kept him in. Oh, how embarrassing. No, uh, was he a portly uh, kid? Willard uh, <laughs> said that kid's got a. He's going to be a hero at school. Well, that. But doesn't yeah. this basically tell all of us that we're we're pretty much running these planes and these airlines on budgets? You know, no, with bare I bones. go back to the manufacturing process. It's like my forty nine Minneapolis Moline. You got to use vice grips and shit like that just well, to keep it running. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Away now, because this plane was only what Wire. four weeks old or something like oh, yeah. that. It oh. was fairly new. Oh, so. <laughs> There you go. I got a car once, a new car. I'm not going to say the make or the dealer, uh -huh. but I drove home, and as I and God must have been with me, because when I pulled into the driveway and stepped on the brakes, there weren't any. Oh, and it what turns car out, is this? turns out, there's no brake lines. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. Wait Brand new car. Stop God. the presses. Yeah. You mean to t check this out? Check this out. <laughs> you mean to tell me? Yeah, that's right. You picked up the car at the and dealership. It was a green the, one, too. The, yep. the, the name was dealership. Yep. And the first time you hit the brakes was in your own driveway. No, it, they they must have worked <laughs> uh, <laughs> enough the, to get home, but the they were changing. they were weakening. Right. And so what it was, they did have brake lines. Obviously, what it was was they weren't they weren't tight enough. Was this the hey, green so I was losing, losing. No, I don't know what it was. Hey, you it had was that driveway, fluid. <laughs> that <laughs> driveway packed. warranty. If you get it out of the driveway, the warranty's expired. Warranty's gone. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, one my, morning. My point being that, you know, have we reached the point where I mean, in in cars, we can understand a lemon leaving the assembly okay. line because it happens, and you know people who it's happened to. Have we reached the point where lemon planes are leaving the assembly line? Because I'm not blaming this on the airline or the pilot. Right, it's got to be the This is a manufacturing well, process. Well, we probably know that they have top... Are you sure it's not one of those drug-addled uh, uh, guys that toss the luggage in? It's one of those guys, right? Oh, well, that's Half the in the bag. No, because they wouldn't have anything to do with that door. Oh. A baggage guy would have nothing to do with that door. Right, you're right. That was cross-checking all But call. why would it release <laughs> mid-flight when it's not its virgin flight? If it was if it wasn't maiden locked, it's maiden yeah, if it if it wasn't maiden voyage. <laughs> maiden voyage. This is a yeah. classic case. It yeah. is a classic case. John, you got one more for us? So sure. since one um, one morning eighties, I'm working at Acme Electronics <laughs> third in Washington, got a sixty nine Pontiac Catalina. That's my winter beater. Um, driving up Cedar Avenue, northbound, right around Lake Street, brakes go out. Uh, I mean, out completely, zero brakes. But I'm behind a Coke truck, and I and that was the the dock truck size. It was it wasn't a semi. Yeah. 
So every time I used him as my brakes yeah. all the way into downtown, nice. all the way down like- Wash. At one point, he pulls over and says, did you hit me? I said, yeah, my brakes went out. I'm using you for a bumper. And he goes, oh, all right. Good luck. Yeah. Uh, and I went yeah, well. all the way to work. And then to make it better, I drove it all the way home, South Minneapolis, after work. Without No brakes. No brakes at all. Wow. Every time I had to slow down, it was I just augured it into the snow bank. Go into a bank. Yeah. Worked out good. That's good. Yeah. You don't need brakes. You nah. need them about <laughs> half the time. Brakes are overrated is what yeah. he's saying. Brakes. All right. So, get, yeah, John. Yeah. A video <laughs> making the rounds this weekend. Perhaps you saw it online uh, showing just how, well, dumb some people are. It's the only way I can put it. A fella, maybe 55 or 60, you see him at a Taco Bell counter. He's yelling at the Taco Bell employee. You're done. You're bleeping done. I'm going to sue your ass off. The man can be heard yelling. One of the managers in the stores then walks up, says, would you like some new food? The man then exclaims, yes, plus you guys are going to pay for my bleeping microwave. It blew up. The man had tried to reheat some Taco Bell food in the microwave, but left the aluminum wrapping oh. on it. Oh. Can I uh, Can I get the promise of all you guys? Will you promise me something? Let's go. Yeah, if maybe. I'm ever in a Taco Bell... <laughs> Screaming at the at the clerk. Yep. Would you have me put away? Yes. You, know, yeah. you didn't get the best of yes. it. He slapped the guy. Yeah. If I ever, if you ever catch me in a Taco Bell and I'm behaving that way, I want to I want to be gently removed, taken okay. to the South. We have the authority. Yes. We got have it. the authority. Got it. Got it. The okay. fast <laughs> food. The fast food meltdowns are the best on YouTube. You go down that rabbit hole, you'll really enjoy but yourself. Isn't it I basically promise you. everyone's about a point three. Is that pretty much what a lot of this is? A great reality TV show would be the McDonald's drive-thru lane. But I don't know which one you'd pick. This guy was just a crabby old man. You could tell by looking at him. Right. All right, here we go. Take a break. Okay. This guy wears many hats, just not indoors. Joe Suchere. me. Just relaxing on a beach with nothing on my mind at all. Jeff did. Been watching the sand crabs crawl. Laminate. The Biden administration umbrella in the shade will remove to a the statue of William Penn. From a Philadelphia park and rehabilitate the park to commemorate Native Americans. The National Park Service under Interior Secretary Deb Holland will remove the statue of William Penn from the park. It was put up in 1982 to celebrate the 300th anniversary of the founding of the colony of Pennsylvania. The park is on the site of his original home in Philadelphia. The park, located in Philadelphia near the Delaware River at Sansom and 2nd Streets, will be rehabilitated, and that proposal will include an expanded interpretation of the Native American history of Philadelphia. The plan was developed in consultations with representatives of the indigenous nations of the Haudenosaunee, the Delaware Nation, Delaware Tribe of Indians, the Shawnee, and the Eastern Shawnee of Oklahoma. Okay. Uh, when I think of William Penn and when I think of history, I only think of one guy, and that's you, Rook. Uh, hey. Give me a little history on William Penn. What did he do wrong, I wonder? I, uh, this I haven't is... gotten to the point yet where he okay. owned slaves. Okay. Um, throughout the show, I have been doing my research on this. I know you have. That's why I turned to he you. He was an English writer, religious thinker, and influential Quaker who founded the province of Pennsylvania during the British colonial area. This mm-hmm. is, he was born in 19, uh, 1644, died in 1718. And I'm trying to find out, it's, it's said here, uh, Penn was an advocate of democracy and religious freedom known for his amicable relationships and successful amicable. treaties. What did I say? Whatever. Okay. Uh, relations and successful treaties with the Lenape Native Americans who resided in present-day Pennsylvania prior to European settlements in the state. I can't see anywhere where uh, he was a slaveholder. He did not. He mistreated uh, Native Americans. I can't Sounds find like anything he did negative. Not, right. No, and he was um, very religious. He did have. 
He lost his first wife, and he married again. Seventeen children total. Really? Oh. So he was uh, he was a player. He was a Quaker <laughs> player. Make, make no mistake about it. Um, but I don't see any type of. He was in the tower. He's in prison in the Tower of London for talking about religious things and uh, rebelling against the England uh, Church of England. Uh, but he went everywhere. He went to Germany, Ireland. Um, you know how he got the land? The land was given to Penn by King Charles II as payment for a debt that Charles owed Penn's father, who had been an admiral in the British Navy. I didn't get to that. Okay, that explains a lot because he had to go over. In 1669, he traveled to Ireland to deal with his father's estates, plural. Okay, but aren't they going to have to get rid of a lot of stuff, like Penn University and the Ivy League, whose president just resigned because of her idiocy? We'll uh, probably have to change the name of the state. state. Change the name of the state. There's a Pennsylvania <laughs> Avenue in St. Paul. I mean, you, you've really got your work cut out for you here to get rid of Penn. Uh, it doesn't well, seem... There's a there's a painting, The Treaty of Penn with the Indians, an 1847 portrait depicting Penn's mostly amicable interactions with Native Americans. Oh, here, I found it. I found it. You ready? Go. Pen, Penn's reputation... What, what's his first name, Rook? William. William, William Penn. William. Penn's reputation was tarnished during the George Floyd riots of 2020 when local national public radio affiliate WHYY explored Penn's history as a slave owner. They said that Penn enslaved roughly 12 people and granted some of them their freedom. WHYY complained that while Quakers protested slavery and spoke out against it, they did not officially denounce it for another 50 years. They don't explain what they mean by that. So, again, uh, a slaveholding has uh, tarnished William Penn, uh, the slaveholding crowd finally got to William Penn now, and he's got to go. Even though, uh, by the standards of the time, he seemed to be a pretty live-and-let-live guy. Yeah. This, yeah. I don't... They're splitting hairs. Okay, so there but goes the statue of Penn in the park. This has obviously been happening for a long time all over the United States, and I, maybe this is wrong of me, but I'm starting to think of it more and more, uh, equating it to ISIS tearing down cultural heritage sites as well you should all over there mm -hmm. uh it's a shame uh, you're not going to change history yeah you can do it all you want but history remains history when george floyd hit man that unleashed a lot of uh, people doing a lot of homework didn't they, they people don't want to learn mm -hmm. they, yeah and the, joe they don't want to learn no. they don't want to learn anything about history and how we've changed and grown as a country. I'm surprised that some care hadn't already been taken to make the park more hospitable to its Indian history. Uh, that would have been cool. Right. right. This right. is in Philly, right? That's in Philly. It, Philly's there, a hellhole. Well, it... it no, uh, no. It, the whole city. Border to border. I've been there many a, times. So have I. Yeah, it's a hellhole. Yeah, it's, it's, there there it's, is a park It's an awful story, city. That might be good. Yes, uh, the uh, park yeah. service there announced that they will be taking comments for two weeks on this, so they still may keep the statue. Oh, good. Or they may, or they may not. I guess depending yeah. on the comments yeah. of, of what to do with that area. Only so because they it. come to us all the way from La Lake Las Vegas, Nevada, from the traveling Lyman. It's only that's the only reason we do it. Yep. It's this day in history. Mm. On this day, uh, that'd be Jan 8. In 1851, Bagon Gizhig, hole in the day, an Ojibwe leader, sent a letter to the Minnesota Territorial Legislature inviting its members to come to, to a St. Paul church and hear him speak about the sufferings and needs of his people and their desire for peace. They are like some poor animal driven into a hole and condemned to guy he, die, he would say, inspiring some of the most influential whites in the territory to form a committee to solicit contributions hmm. for the Ojibwe. Okay. Migwitch. On this day. 1-8. In 1920. Jacob A. O. Pruis Jr., Pruis Jr., son of soon-to-be Governor Pruis Sr., was born in St. Paul, after becoming president of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod in 1969, 
He, along with other advocates of traditionalism, were troubled by alleged liberalism in the facility at Concordia Seminary in St. Louis and their attitude toward biblical authority. A crucial struggle about doctrinal purity would ensue, with Preuss, Proust successfully being reelected re as president in 1973 and thus securing the traditional ways of the Synod. Whew. Wow. That's a mouthful, huh? <laughs> on this day. Uh, today is January 8th, Joe. Proving that nothing's new. On this day in 1924, six people died when a car went through the ice on Lake Andrews near Alexandria. Okay. I'm unfamiliar with Lake Andrews. Kenny? Yeah, there's too many. I have no idea. Uh, thank you. Don't, don't know. On this day, <laughs> on this day, in 1934, during the Great Depression, the U.S. Supreme Court upheld a Minnesota mortgage moratorium law, a decision that State Attorney General Harry H. Peterson applauded as a victory for the people of Minnesota that will enable many farmers and city dwellers to hold on to their homes until good times return. Hmm. And finally, on this day... It's a long one today on January 8th. On this day in 1971, <laughs> President Richard Nixon signed a law creating Voyager's National Park. Oh, okay. Supported by former Gov. Elmer L. Anderson and Charles A. Lindbergh, the legislation had been approved by Congress on October 5 of the previous year, October 5, 1970. Then we went into the new year, and on January 8, uh, Tricky Dick signed, we her, signed, into her, law, in. signed her into law, Voyager's National Park. Hmm. I would also add, on this day in 2005, a young man named Gabriel Thomas Mikulski was born. And I know we don't do birthdays, but over the uh, weekend, he did discuss political aspirations. So maybe you'll get one of What's these. his name? Gabriel his, Thomas. There's something, He's the guy that drank kerosene. Yeah, tiki there's oil, something yes. in his past that we need to discuss yeah, before he... Yeah, he drinks tiki oil. Yeah, he's a, he's a tiki oil <laughs> Or maybe oil fraud drinker. when we got fraud? the... Uh, fraud? He, he was the same thing on your diet. Uh, the hoverboard. Yep, then he would um, go up and down the hallways on Saturday during sports talk. And there's also the question of this these fistful of dollars that you occasionally show up with. We don't know the source yeah, of that. Yeah, I don't and know either. The, Let's the get him out of the way now. The mysterious trip to Fargo... Uh, uh huh. Yes. Yeah. For a gun <laughs> rack. The, the unauthorized, the unauthorized trip to Fargo. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. You know what? Now that we mention all of those things, he'll fit right in. He'd be perfect. <laughs> <laughs> right in. All right. Thank you, G. Ellers. Oh, that's an acronym. Oh, garage logicians. Don't. Don't. All right, folks. Uh, if you want to get more. Entertained, you can go to YouTube, subscribe to Garage Logic on the YouTube page. That's 100, doesn't cost you one red cent or brown cent or whatever it is. And then flip over to garagelogic.com. There's a lot going on at that website. You can check out some of the um, uh, Garage Logic town council. It's 10 bucks a month or $100 for the entire year, and you get to eavesdrop on us. It's a lot, and there's a lot going on during the breaks, post-show, pre-show. Patrick will come in and say, how in the hell did we? It's that kind of stuff, and it's super easy to sign up. The Garage Logic Town Council. Birthday the chat. <laughs>